Welcome to Soul Creek, the another game that a bunch of people yelled at me at at me. Yelled at at me. Yes. Start. No 18 plus morning. Ooh. By far the greatest danger of artificial intelligence is that people conclude too early that they understand it. Oh. Press prescient theme for the day of the System Shock remake release. Yeah. It's topical. Topical video is there game. Breaking glass? What's going on? What is happening? Are, are you okay? okay. Is, do you need me to do you need to, someone to call for help? Are you alright? No, it's just the <laughs> game audio. There's like breaking glass and stuff, like something's happening in the background. This is not the vibe I expected out the gate. I'm being I feel bamboozled like when I first launched Assassin's Creed on, on launch day and <laughs> it wasn't about a, a, a wacky assassin in the olden times, but actually about modern de future day <laughs> Desmond the loser and his wacky dreams. <laughs> Yes, Toaster is joining us after an old day stream where he did all of the original System Shock in one sitting for 14 hours, and now he's got a System Shock hangover just in time for the remake. I do. And I do. we're getting him and for in, a brief window. Yeah, we have a time limit on how long this Let's Try can be, because I have to stream the System Shock remake <laughs> at 5 p.m. today. <laughs> so, we'll Give us see. your best polite robot voice. Uh, external stimulus detected. I can probably do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Conditions acceptable. Wake up exe initiated. Hexagons, that's how you know it's sci-fi. Mm-hmm. We're in a computer right now. It's got raining numbers, zeros and ones, like in that one thing. Running system diagnostics. Please stand by. CPU, functional. Internal hardware, functional. Cognition. Functional. User. Vessel. Verified. Homo sapien. Young adult. Male. Critical alert. Physical trauma detected. Diagnosis unavailable. Insufficient data. Administer external treatment at the first available opportunity. Running memory drive diagnostics. Subconscious memory and conscious memory directories located. Subconscious memory operating at full capacity. Scanning for data. Subconscious memory archives successfully verified. Conscious memory operating at full capacity. Scanning for data. Alert. No data available. Conscious memory contains zero files. Setup will now install user cognizance. Error. Cannot complete installation of user cognizance until freewill.exe has been installed. Would you like to install freewill.exe now? God, being God is such a hassle. I know, it's such a pain. <laughs> what the <sighs> fuck is going on? Error. Function, what the fuck is going on, not found. Would you like to submit an error report? Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, dot exe, located within SAS directory. Unzipping. Initializing, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, dot exe. Error. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Dot exe requires freewill.exe to be installed in order to execute. Would you like to install freewill.exe now? Suck my balls. Error. Unable to locate balls. That's terrible news. <laughs> Alert. An automatic user override has been engaged. Function, stop being an asshole, has been initiated. <laughs> User autonomy temporarily revoked. Free wills are myth. I knew it. <laughs> Setup will now install freewill.exe. Please stand by. Well, no, we don't have free will yet, so, so technically, uh, technically now we can be an asshole. Yeah, I was required without free will. I, I could not avoid being an asshole. 
Success. Free will has been installed. Error. Identifier not found. A new identifier for the user must be chosen to proceed. What's our default name? Alex. Alex. Dot exe has been generated. Additional memory clusters detected. Please select synchronization point. Oh. So this is how they do their Patreon updates. <laughs> yeah, looks like it. So start fresh. Initiating. Beep boop. I'm awake. What's going on? This is too vivid to be a dream. Where am I? You're browsing wallhaven.cc and looking at all these abstract 4K wallpapers. I was going to say, <laughs> is, is this too vivid? It looks like a wallpaper. <laughs> Have you seen a lot of the smear tool? This person's the Van Gogh of the smear tool. <laughs> I can't remember anything. All I have is my name. Alex. Imagine I'm... <laughs> going on a bender and waking up and being like, I don't remember anything from the night before. And the only record you have of the night before is a seven gigabyte folder of 24,000 wallpapers you <laughs> saved. I need to reconstruct my whole personality from this folder. <laughs> I, uh, I'm amused by the, uh, just the, just the full throat immediate statement. I am not a blank slate. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. As far as visual novel protagonists go. I'm not a blank slate. I know I'm human. I have knowledge. I have instinct and thought. I have no recollection of any world outside this place, but... Apples! Why are apples the first thing that comes to mind? Wait. Who is this man named Steve Jobs I keep remembering? <laughs> apples! But I remember something. I, I heard a voice. Someone was here. Hello? Hello? No reply. Hey! Hey! I heard you! Please! I need help! Nothing? No, I know someone heard me. I know I heard someone. Hey! I know you're there! Answer me, dickhead! <laughs> Alex! Ugh! What the? Are you all right? I... what? You... what? Sorry if I startled you. You called for me. I believe your exact words were... Answer me, dickhead. Wow. Rude. What the hell is this? You can't be real. Of course I'm real, dickhead. My name is Byte. I'm an artificial intelligence residing within your subconscious. This is just some absurd hallucination conjured by my fevered brain. Y you're a robot? Not really. I'm just ones and zeros. I have no body. I've been installed on your memory drive. I have no mouth and I must scream. <laughs> my memory drive? Where's Are you saying I'm root? a robot? I, robot? <laughs> <laughs> Me, robot. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're a human. Humans don't have memory drives. They don't? No, we have brains. Flesh and blood. We... This is stupid. I'm in a coma and you're a hallucination, right? Is that... Is that right? Nope. I'm not part of a dream. My code is installed in your deep subconscious, and that's why you can see me and hear me. My role is to assist in your cognitive functions and provide support to you however I can. I have many internal and external functions that you may call upon at any time. Just be aware that I can't access internal thought, as I can your external actions. So you're like a, a, a brain butler? I'm not a butler. 
I'm a highly advanced artificial intelligence. Why, why are you negging butlers? Are they not intelligent? <laughs> Hopelessly confused, I try and recall how I got here, but still have no memory to go off of. Why can't I remember anything? Ah, right. There was an error with your memory drives. They're, they're the storage units where all your memory is stored. I'm not a computer bite. The excitable AI ignores me. Your conscious memory drive was totally empty. Normally, that's where your explicit, psychologically forward memory is kept. That's where you download your porn. That's what he's saying. <gasps> My wallpapers. Without any data on your conscious drive, you won't have any memories you can actually interpret. It'll feel like you were literally born just now. It just keeps getting weirder. How did I get here? I'm not sure. You're unconscious. I think you've suffered some hardware damage. Do you mean I'm injured? It took me a minute to, to realize like how to get into robot voice, and then I realized all you have to do is just pretend every single word is capitalized, like the first letter <laughs> of every single word is capitalized, and it just comes completely naturally. Exactly. You are not in any immediate danger, but you've lost blood. I'm definitely human then. Of course, just like I said. Then there must be something in my brain hosting you? Humans don't have memory drives. Guess which hole I used. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do. I'm entirely sure we don't. What about a central processing unit? Nope. Printed circuit mainboard. No. Volatile memory chips. What the fu- Are you saying I have all that inside me? I'm not a computer. Or am I? I haven't actually seen my body yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Well then, how am I here? Computer chip? In my brain? Nope. Didn't find any in my diagnostic. Then I'm a cyborg, or like an android. A human, but with robot parts. I told you, Alex. I don't know. Alex is not ready for the, the Soma realization that he's just, an, he's just a simulated personality <laughs> of whoever Alex once was. In a yeah. in a porny wolf MMO <laughs> oh, God. or whatever the fuck the setting is because we're, we're not there Tra trapped in an MMO until you can bed the wolf. I don't know if you'd want an until if you're an, an artificial person <laughs> <laughs> or or a synthetic human like a, a human that's been grown. I'm not even sure that's a thing. Great. He knows next to nothing. Do you know anything about the world, at least? The world? Yes. The world. What's out there? Literally all I know is this coma. Come on, give me something. For a highly advanced AI, no, you know fuck all. Hey, don't open your SAS directory at me. I was only activated 0.3 of a second before you were but the SAS is one of my ports. I started you up and here we are. This is frustrating for me too, dickhead. I'm taken aback by his outburst. It's not what I'd expect from a computer program with an E. So we know which side of the pond this came from. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you programmed to, you know, feel emotions? Dickhead is kind of my insult. No, it's Fight not. Falters. You can't just claim dickhead, man. What the hell? <laughs> All the That's dickheads are mine. Insult. You can't have any. <laughs> Sorry, I learned it from you. I learned it from watching you. <laughs> it's just part of my personality matrix. Like AI art, I just take things that people have done and mash them together to make my own personality. You're what? 
personality matrix. I'm programmed to mimic both your language and behavioral traits to appear more personable. They're not real emotions, it's just code. I can barely decipher my own thoughts. I don't need another Alex inside my head. It's just not what I'd expect from an AI. You seem very... human? No, no, that's just the personality matrix doing its job. Right, so why did you... uh... activate me or whatever? I was programmed to initialize. When certain predetermined external conditions were met, my first queued operation was to get your CPU up and running. When you say CPU, do you mean my heart? What's the difference? Uh, everything. A heart is not... Yeah. A, a CPU is not the heart of a computer. The CPU not, is a brain. I was going <laughs> to say that's doing? not even an, an analogous piece. <laughs> Just... Uh, forget it. What kind of external conditions? If I'm reading my code right, I think it was triggered by physical contact with another intelligent sentience. You mean someone touched me? Show me on the AI. No. <laughs> exactly. My port's another person. Yes. Another human person? Quite possibly. Are humans degenerate? A person, <laughs> an actual human person. They could be. They could help me. And then this is the needle drop where he goes, "It's a real person." And then he turns around and it's a big hunky gay wolf. Ooh, ooh. I need to speak to them. Can you wake me up? Yes, I could overcharge your medulla with a bioelectrical discharge. That sounds horrifying. That will give you a huge injection of adrenaline and nor adrenaline. Then I'll trick your neurons into stimulating a cardiopulmonary spasm. A cardiopulmonary... What? Did you just make that up? That sounds massively painful. That is not made up. <laughs> Most probably. Brilliant. How long have I been out? 13 hours, 7 minutes, and 52 seconds have passed since your startup. Are you kidding me? I could be bleeding to death right now. I need to get out of here. I need answers. Okay, fine. Wake me up. Brace yourself. Here goes nothing. Ugh. Pain. Everywhere. Clawing at my bones, crushing my mind. I gasp for breath and my lungs are shredded by ice-cold air. Bites cardiopulmonary orgasm or whatever the <laughs> hell it would call it. It certainly did the trick. My chest is thumping from overstimulation. <laughs> and Jesus. White <laughs> hot choice. agony shoots across my abdomen. <laughs> my hand darts to the source. Oh my It's hand. my peen. <laughs> Agony shoots over my abdomen from overstimulation. Oh my Weird. god! It's it's really wet and sticky as well. I wonder <laughs> why. <laughs> Come on! I feel sticky. Yep. <laughs> Bloody bandages across my torso. My blind fumbling disturbs the wound beneath, and another wave of pain hits me like a truck. God, uh, bite. You still with me? Try to steady your breathing. In, out, in, out. I'm not in labor, Bite. I'll tell you I, something else he's familiar breathing. with going in and out. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> I try and open my eyes, but my vision fails to formulate. Ugh. Where am I? My functions are linked to your senses. If you can't see, then neither can I, dickhead. Stop calling me that. You started it. I'm arguing with the voice in my head. This is also screwed. Steadying myself against the frigid air, I tear my eyes open. Ooh, ah, my ah. <laughs> that was an effect. Some Viking, Viking hut. Oh, this is a trip. Yeah, this art looks like it looks like AI generated, kind of. <laughs> like it looks not like in a, 
in a bad way. It just looks very hazy and dreamlike. I actually really like this quality. I I think it's a photo. Yeah, I think it's an edited yeah, photo. I think it's a photo with like liquify and some other effects yeah. thrown over it. There's 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 some trippiness going on. Uh <laughs> it's like what they it's like how some drugs are described to affect your vision. <laughs> Yeah, this is very much what like doing shrooms is like. When you look at the f like, look at the floor there. See how they're, it's yeah. all like liquidified. That's yeah, what it looks I'm, like. I'm staring at the fur on the bed and how it looks like it's just these long streaks. Yeah, and how the fireplace looks like it's melting. I'm in a primitive hut, lying on a supple fur skin bed. There's a single doorway opposite me that's bolted shut. I sit up slowly, wincing in pain. Looking down at myself, I'm relieved to see a human body with olive-toned skin. I've been dressed in thin, worn-out leggings that are far too large. A thread of rope serves as a makeshift belt. My feet and upper body are completed, completely exposed to the cold. I, <laughs> if you just say leggings, I assume you're not wearing pants. <laughs> it's just leggings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a brawny human. I've got some muscle on me, but nothing remarkable. There are dull, cream-colored bandages tightly wrapped around my abdomen, squeezing a wound in my left side. Blood has soaked through the linen. It's so cold. My breath is misting up in front of me. Uh, ah! That's brisk. I clasp my hands together in front of my mouth, breathing into my enclosed fists to warm them. It doesn't really help. It's gonna smell like overwhelmingly of smoke in here. Yeah. <laughs> Indoor fire. Oxygen levels are thin. I'd say we're high. 6,000 feet at least. A mountain range. I frown, perturbed by my environment. What kind of mad bastard would want to live in this cold? Unless I'm the mad bastard, and this is my home? I notice something strange. The hut seems very primitive. Almost Stone Age. But there's, there are ramshackle modern items in here too. There's another post-apocalypse. Worn out bulbs hang from a string wire above. A dilapidated fan heater is sitting next to the fire pit. Strangers of all are the crates of old scrap metal and junk in the corner. Their contents rusted and waning beyond recognition. It looks like someone raided an ancient scrapyard. Some things I can just about identify. Toothbrushes, a digital watch, several mobile phones, what I think might be a laptop, a television remote, and other things of that nature. In this hut? <laughs> yeah, apparently. I don't know why there's such a, a specific mix, like they, because they have like themed shields and everything like that. Yeah. But then there's a laptop. It's all modern stuff, but ancient and decayed. Am I in the future? The post-human society. Bite. What is this place? Can can you? Can it scan it or something? I can. My scanning function is integrated into your optic nerves, so try and get a good look at things. I slowly pivot my head around, hugging myself to stave off the cold. My teeth are starting to chatter. Hmm. The supports, walls, and furniture are elm. The fire pit and oven is a mix of granite and slate. Everything is between 12 and 13 years old. Uh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> how is granite and slate 13 years old? I'm just like, how is ev everything is a strange claim for several reasons. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we have ancient devices in the room. We have stuff made of stone. <laughs> I don't know how you determine an age or meaning that the last time this device was modified to make it a stone place somehow. I know this somehow, I guess. How do you know all that? I scanned it. Told you I'm highly advanced. Wow. That's actually pretty amazing. Although, by its abilities have worrying implications for my humanity. If this is all a simulation, that'd be the easiest answer to why everything's 13 years old. <laughs> yes. I look at the electric light bulbs, the old electric fan eater, and the crates of salvaged parts. What about all that stuff? 
some of that junk is centuries old. I'm detecting a live electric current. The heater and light bulbs are both fully functional, but everything else is just ancient scrap. I frown. What year is this? Sorry, no calendar installed. I couldn't tell you. I look down at my wounded abdomen, grazing my fingertips over the bandages. Pain shoots up my side. Ugh. What about this? It really stings. It's a stellate laceration. Most probable cause is significant penetrating trauma from something sharp. I'm not detecting any stitches, so don't move around too much. You could cause further damage. A shiver again. I mean, you could cause further damage by moving around too much with stitches. <laughs> yeah. But it's even easier now. You come with a heater? Nope. See if you can find something to wrap yourself in. I look back at the electric fan heater, noticing the wire plugged into the back of it. It's probably my best chance of warming up. I try to slide off the bed and switch it on, but something tugs at my ankle. I hear the jingle of a metal chain. I'm horrified to see my ankle has been tied to the bedpost. I tug at the chain, but I, it just rattles uselessly against the bed. What the? Bite! Why am I tied up? I don't know. The chain is steel. You'll never break it. The bed isn't, though. <laughs> yeah, no shit. What do I do? There's a padlock. You'll need the key. Bite, look up the walkthrough. <laughs> Whoever tied me up wouldn't have left me the fucking key. Honestly, that's a good idea for like a like a point and click adventure game is like you have an AI in your head. So this explains why you can like look at the environment and it will be like this clock is 27 years old. <laughs> it's ticking at these slightly slow speeds or, or something like that. You know how I you like I've examine a game everything. Like that. Uh, maybe Cradle. I don't know. I don't bit some some AI type things. Gotcha. Or I guess I guess I'm thinking of uh, from the layers of fear people. They had that uh, observer. Ob yeah, observer. I talked about that game earlier today with someone. It has uh, extended. It has such long horror sequences they get boring. Yeah, uh, that's not a very good game. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> all right. Try breaking the bedpost. This is crazy. I wasn't rescued. I was kidnapped. Fighting to keep my shivering hands still, I tug and batter at my restraints to no avail. I'm panicking. I can't think straight. My wounded side starts stinging from all my frenetic, frenetic movements. I barely notice the notice it start to feel claggy and wet. Suddenly, I hear a soft thump. Thump, thump from outside. Footsteps. It's my captor. They're here. I've barely time to frenziedly shuffle to a more defensive pose. I'm ready to make a hasty escape or fight for my life. Not really. <laughs> oh, but I'm not running anywhere with my foot restrained. Where would I even run? I'll freeze to death. The doorway opens. The light floods in. A blinding rush of ice-cold wind hits me. I raise my arm to protect my face. The door slams shut with a clunk. I'm just thinking that, like, if you're if you're chained to a bed, like, it's a little worrying, but if you woke up and don't know how you got here or how you got hurt and you, you were seemingly bandaged and rescued, it seems more like they just don't know who you are, so they're go going to keep you somewhere until you can talk. It's, it's not the most worrying thing compared to the actual thing that hurt you. Yeah. Oh my god. What the? Is this Furcon? I... <laughs> He's some kind of canine humanoid? He's huge. Guy, That's why his pants are like... so baggy. <laughs> this guy looks like he runs a like primitive bushcraft <laughs> channel where he goes out into the woods yeah. for 30 days at a time and builds a dugout and lives in it for whatever reason. <laughs> a camera crew watches him building a shelter. I'm dumbstruck by his titanic structure. What? <laughs> mm. <laughs> um is absolutely massive architecture. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't ready for that word choice. 
<laughs> this is very His titanic frame or something, I don't know. He's enormously well built and padded by a dense arctic pelt. After stooping down to enter the lodge, why is he shorter than his own door? Uh, he straightens out and stands at at least seven or eight feet high. If I were stood beside this giant, my island would barely reach his chest. I gape at the hound-esque features on his face, particularly the blue eyes that pierce like small cerulean razors. Are those the are those <laughs> hound-like features, or do humans not have eyes? <laughs> <I don't. laughs> yeah. Zeroing in on, I, I don't know, I guess the, uh, it's because he kind of has husky eyes. Yeah. Which are pretty particular. I yeah, I shouldn't criticize. I mean, that was not, my point was not to criticize, it was more just pointing out, like, that's kind of a little, that's kind of silly, that's a silly yeah, thing th to say. They highlight his alien features, then follow it with eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it does look like he, have, he has husky eyes, and husky eyes are really, really piercing Mary. and strange. Because they're, they're yes, like, they almost are. white. We make eye contact, and he sees that I'm awake. <laughs> That's a goofy face. The creature hits me with a vicious scowl that could curdle milk. I don't know what that means. I've heard that before. It's not a new phrase, but I just don't know what it means in the terms of... faces. <laughs> my, eyes, my heart seizes fearfully. Oh no, my CPU is overloading. I spite, in spite of his canine characteristics, I'm still able to read his body language. He seems really unhappy to see me awake. Bite? Help? Alex, keep quiet. Try talking to me in your head. Perplexed, I try just thinking my words to bite. Like this? Yes, I hear you. Then help me. What, what is this thing? Scan it, scan it. I'm trying, but you're too worked up. It's causing latency. You need to calm down. Food. I'm about to get fucking mauled to death. That's not a, a realistic uh, take. You're more likely to get split in half, my friend. Try deep breathing. Deep breathing isn't the answer to everything, dipshit. Oh wow, a new one for his vocabulary for him to throw back wow, at us. Wow, we're gonna teach him all the swears. Yeah. The husky's eyes flick up and down as he conducts his own scan of me. He steps closer. In my panic, I just assume he's keeping me here for as his next meal. I'm gonna get slow roasted in that cooking oven, limb by limb. More likely spit roasted. <laughs> get away from me! <laughs> I try to shuffle away, but the chain around my ankle goes taut. In response, he gesticulates at me with both hands. I can't tell if he's signaling for me to calm down, or if he's about to throttle me. He has fingers and thumbs, similar to human hands, and there are supple pads on his palms and fingertips. They're somewhere between, between hands and paws. What? <laughs> takes another step. <laughs> he's too close. I'm in fight or flight mode now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said back off, you furry fuck. <laughs> I bare my teeth threateningly at him, snarling like a cornered beast. <laughs> I just, it's really hard to imagine how goofy this would be. Yeah, this is all very silly. He just snarls back, back sexily, uh, car sharp canine <laughs> fangs glinting beneath his agitated upper jaw. Okay, he wins the snarl off. He could bite my entire head off if he wanted to. Bite? Does he got any weak spots? Like, an eyeball on his forehead that I could shoot it with an arrow. If he attacks, try and get your blood in his eyes so he can't see. Uh, useless AI. I heard that. I don't want this to be in our head whenever we have horny thoughts. <laughs> I don't I don't like that. I don't like the intruded no. It's just like you're like cucking poor bite. <laughs> <laughs> Every you single... just sit there and watch, buddy. I like to be watched. This is the game for people that like to be watched. I've completely forgotten about my wound or the lethal cold somehow. Adrenaline is pumping through me. I have to do something. 
These are the two choices. Alex might be kind of dumb. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think he's really dumb. I I don't want to voice act yelling more, so I'm gonna hit him. <laughs> Somehow? What did, I, what did I even use? Great. That did absolutely nothing. I'm so dead. He lurches forward and snatches my wrist with a swipe of his bulky paw. I wince as pain shoots down my side. There's no way I can fight him. He's so much bigger than me. <laughs> I guess this is it. Puck. <laughs> That's the first noise he makes. Don't think of that. <laughs> he spoke? <laughs> what? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Pothokui Zenumifte. Welcome to Star Wars. <laughs> it is really hard to imagine a dog making those noises with its mouth. I just want to say that. It's <laughs> fine. Put that out there. It's fine. Dog, uh, uh, dog voices. I, I watched a video. Maybe you all can find it on YouTube. But it tries to it was say an interesting... what they actually sound like. Uh, yeah, that was it. Was a linguistics professor talking about like what would animal speech resemble if they if they theoretically could make voiced consonants and sounds with their mouths um and like dogs speak with like very like the, the best way to describe it would be like trumpet like uh exclamations like because their their throats are very strong and they uh and so are their diaphragms so they end up literally barking their words but also dog lips are very like from a muscular perspective they're pretty loose compared to human lips we have very very um uh prehensile faces humans because <laughs> we we it's the it's correct that's that's the best way to describe it is uh because we we need to communicate with them like we we use our facial expressions and our lips really specifically to make the sounds uh that we need to make to to make vowels and uh you know specific consonants and stuff so uh the thing with dogs is that their jowls basically hang just by default <laughs> um so their voices would be very percussive and very uh wet <laughs> so they they would talk like someone puffing out their cheeks and there would be a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, like cheek flapping sounds. So there's like a lot of chaos in their voices because they don't have as much control over their lips as humans might. Um, and it, it's just very interesting to think about that. Um, whereas like uh, obviously creatures like lizards um, would have very great difficulty speaking certain consonants or even making certain sounds because their their like lips their their mouth is basically you know like hardened scale <laughs> like it's just like one it just wraps around their bone so they don't have a lot of uh, ability to really move their lips at all or or articulate different noises so anyway that's my if furries were real uh you hear that <laughs> people making the, the modded day. voiced version of that aster i'm expecting you to take notes yeah, I want authentic uh, amicus every time that the uh, that the translator fails. Yeah, uh, if you want to hear what Just authentic gross, amicus would guttural, sound like, wet slapping, yeah, dog f noises. Let's, if you want to hear what um what a real life amicus <laughs> would sound like, uh, watch the skull bear scene from Annihilation, and that's a pretty good oh, approximation. No. <laughs> the pull. Although I don't understand the language, I'm totally stalled by the boomy quality of his voice. I've never heard anything quite like it. It's gruff, candid, and strikingly assertive. Hearing it's like being doused in vicious warm honey. <laughs> Viscous warm honey. <laughs> Viscous warm honey. Because that's not what... That's not what the words that they wrote sounded like. Because the words that they wrote sounded very weird. That's not what I would describe as viscous warm honey. For a, for a split second, my frenzied panic is diluted by its intensity. I gop stupidly until he gestures at my bandaged belly with rising urgency. 
New patches of dark, wet blood are seeping through the bandages. All my frantic movements have reopened the wound. In a torrent of panic and adrenaline, I hadn't even felt the pain. He remained steady. My arm clasped tightly in his grasp to keep me still. I feel the pads of his paws squeezing my muscles. He isn't trying to maul me at all. He's just staring, waiting. We remain in a stalemate for a while, glaring at one another. But with every passing second, I feel the pressure from his paw loosening. Gentle, gradual trust is beginning to crystallize. I had to very carefully double check that it was the word Not trust. Not say thrust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did the same double take. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we like this? His expression softens very slightly. I think he wants to help? Perhaps I can trust him not to eat me. But I'm not dropping my guard. I'm still his prisoner. The husky seems to comprehend my body language and lets go of my wrist, kneeling down beside me so our faces are level. I clench my jaw and surrender, in surrender and nod, granting him permission to help. Origato ud... Tomo origato. Origato udu klavivok. He mumbles more alien words in his turbid monotone, then begins to unwrap the bandages. Be aware, it was turbid. not his turgid monotone, it is his turbid yeah, monotone. Turbid. Very different. I don't know the word turbid, actually. Me neither. But for, for warm honey, I wasn't expecting a monotone to follow. My skin around the wound is raw and sensitive, and bristles as his fur makes my body- The bristles of his fur make my body twitch reflexively as they brush against me. Tokiwi. He glances a paw at my side to steady me. They're quite soft, like tepid rubber. Tepid rubber. Some of these descriptions are very hard to- <laughs> I don't- I do not know what to yeah. make of, of the- He's, he, I'm, he, I'm they, they, not they sure. Just, they, they do a simile to a thing. And the, the noun, I understand. But the the adjective added to the noun throws me each time. <laughs> where I'm like, huh. I grip the sides of the bed and grit my teeth as the pain returns, avoiding further eye contact with him. For a big brute, he's got a gentle touch. And he can talk, too. He's not some dumb tribal beast. He's intelligent. If only I could translate him. I bet I know someone who could. Hey, Bite, you there? Alex, good you didn't get mauled. No shit. Did you manage to scan him through all my relaxing deep breaths? I did, but there wasn't much useful information to gain from it. He's a bipedal husky, 7 feet and 11 inches in height, Damn. early to mid-30s. Two nippies. <laughs> he has a very large, slick pink. <laughs> Whoa. His coat is very thick, and he's probably lived in a cold climate all his life. It's very funny that he has very... Th just imagine thinking about, like, we're, we're going to the logistics of having super, super thick fur for the cold. But the nippy's exposed. <laughs> and he wears pants still. Just to make sure you, he, I guess it's just for modesty. <laughs> See his build, endomorphic. He must have a very active lifestyle. And look at how he's handling your bandages. He has a dominant left paw. It's Wolf Link. <laughs> <laughs> I've solved the riddle. <laughs> I know where we are now. <laughs> That's why there's a weird mix of technology and med medieval looking stuff. It's just Twilight Princess. <laughs> what is he? He's not human. No, but his muscular and skeletal structure is very similar to yours. Oh, and he's speaking Midna's language. I don't have a tail bite. I said similar, dipshit. Breathe through your nose for a second. Uh, why? So you can set smell? I want to smells. smell your musky husky. Yes. I need Just a musk sample. <laughs> 
I shut my mouth and inhale through my nostrils. The husky continues disentangling the bandages, oblivious. Going by the scent he's giving off, this lodge is most certainly where he lives. Did you just smell him? Well, I mean, you technically, did. Technically, technically you did. <laughs> Using my nose? Yep, my functions are linked to all your senses, not just your eyesight. They fly now? Ugh, look, he tried to speak to me earlier. Can you translate him? Hmm, I'm not sure I have that function. I could do a quick search of your subconscious drive to check. Yeah, do it, just on the off chance, you know? Alright, bear with me. Don't look at my kinks. <laughs> Erase the part about my, my browser history. <laughs> my mental browser history. Especially the last 30 seconds. Bite disappears from my peripheral vision. Meanwhile, the husky's snout is pointed down as he focuses on peeling the last few linen wraps from my torso. I'm starting to feel cold again. I glare enviously at that thick, arctic fluff enveloping his shoulders and neck like a blanket. Huh. This is the first time I've really looked at him closely. Despite his sheer size and brutish demeanor, he has really soft features. Watching him work silently, I'm starting to feel less tense around him. He's just a huge, great fluffy hound. Were the situation different, and were he a touch less grouchy, I'd almost be tempted to pet him. Don't what the hell that. is that's, wrong with me? That's culturally insensitive. <laughs> you have to ask first. I think back to what Byte said earlier. His muscular and skeletal structure is very similar to yours. I wonder how similar. Oh my god, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> immediately. You've just encountered the concept of this creature for the first time and you're immediately thinking about his dick. <laughs> my eyes travel down his upper body. I catch sight of the fluffier white fur that coats his chest. I'm drawn to the various the shades instinct. of white and black to make up his winter pelt. You, the human instinct to see something very large and go, I wonder how that thing fucks. And you're just like, wow, the V of his pants is very low. Beneath his fur, he has staunch muscles. He is really robust. <laughs> My gaze creeps further down. I look at the finer details of his fur, like how it becomes ruffled and thick uh, beneath his belly button. He is digitigrade. I guessed it right. <laughs> No My eyes keep him. sliding down to his waistline and further down. This is so it's so rare Weird. that a sprite has feet. <laughs> Look at his feet. Look at his actual feet. He has dew Hold claws. Text. Yeah, I was gonna say he's got dew claws. He's got the he's got furry foot thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> he's got dew claws. He's got digitigrade feet. He's a sprite with feet, which is just incredibly unusual. <laughs> Very rare. Yeah. Now we know why people really like Soul Creek. Further down? Uh, seriously? Did my mind have to go there? Right now? How far were we again? Yes. Yes, you beneath, horny beneath bastard. The belly, oh, beneath the belly button. <laughs> we were being shown all the way down to his feet, so I got out of sync with the narration of where we were. I'm like, oh, yeah. what is beneath his feet, you horny, you horny weirdo? <laughs> why, why is that <laughs> freaking you out? <laughs> uh, seriously? My cheeks flush red and I wrench my eyes away. Looks like I'm into guys then. This is how you found <laughs> out. <laughs> this is how <laughs> for some people it's that easy, right? Sometimes when you're when you're a child, you put banjo kazooie in your N64 and you go, "My stomach feels weird," and then you just know for the rest of your life. I mean, I I talked about in my essay about how I abstracted it to werewolves and shit, but like, fuck, <laughs> this guy's like, <laughs> I'm guessing this guy's like 30 or something, so like. <laughs> I, I have to I have to remind myself that he's a, he, that he's uh, got amnesia because the, an adult realizing just now that he's into guys is very fucking funny. <laughs> hey, you won't believe this, but I found some translation software in your subconscious memory drive. If we install it. It'll automatically translate whatever he's saying for you. It's very funny that our AI also has amnesia. By the way, I also like guys. 
And get this, it works both ways. He'll be able to understand you. That's impossible. How? Well, you're just going to speak his language. The software will modify your vocalizations to match the desired output. You won't even notice it's happening. Ignoring that last line, that has to be an incredibly strange experience, right? Like, and, and at Astra, there's one of the details that's easy, it's easy to forget sometimes is that the lingua gives everyone a dubbed effect where everyone yeah. that, that Marco meets is speaking English, but it doesn't match their <laughs> lips because they're not speaking English and they're and so the translation doesn't match their lips. Imagine thinking and m moving moving to say things and then the wrong motions come out of your face the whole time. <laughs> I'm just I just imagine I know that it's more it's supposed to be more like, you know, like a. Uh, I don't know, more more akin to something like that, like watching a dubbed movie that's just like slightly off. But after reading that line in Adastra, my mind immediately goes to Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. <laughs> <laughs> just like... <laughs> just Mar Marco starts crying after walking in on Neferu and Amicus. Wee -wee 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 -wee. This is very I funny. That's, I've not that's watched the movie since I was like 10, but it was it was... I was obsessed with it for like a while. Oh, like I watched that movie it is way too much. Like, uh, people accuse me of being a film snob, and I am one. But uh, but Kung Pao Enter the Fist is literally a perfect comedy. I, I do not <laughs> think there is a a parody that has worked on that level in in as many years. I think it's <laughs> it I is, think it's the most referenced movie that I talk about that I haven't seen in the longest. Oh, I just I reference into that my movie brain. all the time. Like I have, there are things that I just say in conversation yes. that I have forgotten come from that movie until yeah. someone brings it up and they're like, "Ha ah, Kung Pao, that's so funny." And I'm like, "Oh my god, I forgot." The number it came of from times that. I've said those, like, "Aha, how do you like my face to your foot technique?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such yes. a stupid fucking movie. <laughs> I really, I really like uh, one. One of the things that I say very often, especially when I walk the same direction as someone else, when we're like leaving, you know, like when you like say goodbye to someone, uh, and then you like awkwardly walk the same direction, is I'll, I almost always say, "You go that way, I'll go home." <laughs> Just walk, or, uh, and then uh, without without uh, missing a beat, every single time I walk into one of those like Outback Steakhouse, like Texas Roadhouse restaurants that gives you the peanut shell every single time just without before I can even stop myself I go that's a lot of nuts <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god that is from Kung Pao <laughs> it is from Kung Pao exactly uh, so yeah all you all zoomers this, out there have never the, seen the, just all the same energy is like that's a lot of fish uh, <laughs> yes uh, uh, the the other good one uh, is is when they're at the they're, they're at the monastery chanting while they're fighting. Our sexual preferences are our own business. That's a good one too. <laughs> All you zoomers out there have never seen Kung Pao. Go see it. It's a 2002 movie. If Alex you're, could if definitely you're... use Neosporin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. The scanning was one thing, but this. Even with bite, it's unbelievable. Whatever. None of this makes any goddamn sense as it is, so I might as well just take every advantage I have. Will it take long to install? Nope. Less than a second. Alright, just do it. Okay, brace yourself. Ah! A sudden electric charge tears through my body. I yelp loudly. The husky jerks back in surprise at my outburst, ears splayed and teeth bared. Why? <laughs> Do you not understand pain responses? <laughs> this is no weird reaction, honestly. I frantically yeah. shake my hands at him. S sorry, I, I didn't mean to yell. I, I was just... It was an accident, sorry. Bite, what the hell was that? It worked. The software installed successfully. That hurt you, asshole. Oh, right. My uh. bad. Must have been a neural discharge caused from the rearranging uh, of data. 
I guess I must have done auto somehow. <laughs> where, where, where's my cursor? Anyway. <laughs> it worked, though. I'm pretty great, aren't I? Call me if you need me. Smug prick. Okay, that's the first one has to be an an I. I think it's Illalian. Given my jokes from a second ago, it's suspiciously close to Hylian. <laughs> yeah. I was oh, like, hang on a minute. Now, double L in this language is pronounced Y, so it's Iyalian. It's You speak Iyalian. <laughs> that that, that. <laughs> that's that's awful a mouthfeel, huh? No, it's horrible. Iyalian. Iyalian. It's the old McDonald language. Iyalian. <laughs> 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 God damn it. Uh, really hard to line read sometimes. But yeah. Talking is hard, everyone. It's hard to, to relax enough to do a deep voice when you're laughing. Uh, you speak Ulalian? <laughs> My eyes widen. No way. I understood him. It really did work. All is forgiven by you're a genius. But my elation deflates. <laughs> Had to double check that one again. Like a yep. like a pin punctured balloon <laughs> when I notice my cap my captor's eyes drilling into mine. His potent voice is followed by a deep growl. He sounds mad. I I guess. His nostrils flare. Fine. He goes back to unwinding my bandages. Okay, not exactly a talkative dog guy. The last bandage tugs at my blood-congealed skin as he peels it off. I wince through the pain, finally able to see how badly I'm hurt. Just as Bite said, there's a vicious laceration <clears throat> on my left side going from beneath my ribs to the side of my, of my belly button. Fresh blood oozes from the cut. The husky gently placed a, places a padded thumb against my skin a few inches from the wound. Ugh. This is one of those things that I notice a lot in furry visual novels where, uh, how am I going to explain this? Blood congealed skin doesn't <laughs> make sense <laughs> because blood is what You're flashing congeals. Flashing back a liar. Not, yes. Blood is what congeals, not skin. So you can't apply congealed, like putting blood on your skin doesn't make your skin feel congealed. Putting blood on your skin and then letting the blood congeal makes the blood feel congealed. So that's a little weird. This well, visual level, I wonder. Well, I guess if you, one of your skin can become dirty, so I guess your skin can become blood congealed. Well, your skin can become sticky from congealed blood. The quality sure. of your skin, however, will not become congealed. So I wonder. This is something that I that I just think about a lot with a lot of these amateur, especially just this is like a thing in original English language visual novels in general. But there's like a there's like a degree of amateurness to it. And I don't mean that in a like, oh, you amateurs. Wait, but I mean, like, like indie to it where it's like I can't 100 percent tell if you are if the, one of the writers is maybe English as a second language or if they are just uh, they don't understand the word that they're using despite trying to be descriptive. Um, and it's something that in bigger commercial releases you don't see because they typically pay editors to go through with like a style guide and a, uh, uh, a uh, you know, like an edit, edit pass to make sure that everything matches up. But it, it adds, it gives a real strange quality to especially furry visual novel writing where you have every single time I read it, I'm like, this feels like I'm in a dream because words are kind of just put here and they don't really make a lot of sense. So my brain can't really conjure up an, an image of what I'm supposed to be imagining, <laughs> even though yeah, I, understand I get what you mean. The there's, words. there's phrasing we trip on in specific games as, as you go through these. But I, I think it's like, I think that just is indie. I don't think it's ESL. I think it's just, yeah. 
I think I think ESL implies English sign language. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's English I don't is think a it's, second language. I don't think it's second second language. I I think it's just the, like I I read a lot of like online fiction that people yeah. just posted themselves and a lot of that stuff is like incoherent by comparison. So the visual novels yes. are much more polished than what you usually read that then didn't have the effort of being put into a visual novel. <laughs> yeah, and like Fear and Hunger yeah. is just full of typos and and mistakes the entire time. Sure. Uh, it's just but, it's one of those things where it's like I understand the logic that led to people chaining these words together because congealed is a very evocative like physical sensation word like it's an it's an adjective that describes a very visceral feeling but it's applied incorrectly in the sentence so it's it it's like something you wouldn't notice if you're just experiencing the text but if you are reading the text, it becomes like our job as let's tryers, so to speak. <laughs> uh, I feel like we pick up on this stuff a lot more than your average reader because they're reading I mean, just it having to get two the... people makes you pick up on more on all the writing, which is like yes. all throughout the echo and everything that has its own benefits, too. But also means we like yeah. latch on to things constantly. It's just interesting. It's interesting yeah. to note that. But uh, my, my when point we played is Liar, less... I kept fixating on the fact that the, uh, there was a lot of sentences that like felt like they were just a cliche sort of like sentence you would just throw out there out of habit and yeah the implications of the sentence weren't necessarily thought through and often contradicted what the scene was actually saying because yeah it's but like they were like such comfortable uses... like familiar sentences that you could just feel them just like using them out of habit and then moving on yeah i had a i had a friend who um he he would sometimes like end sentences like end statements with like and so on and so forth yeah as if that was like a statement that you would end a sentence with without realizing that like most people use that to mean like etc so imagine being like yeah we went out for the day and it was really fun etc yeah it's like, that I think it's lot, it's, just the, it's, the, it's the quirk of, of of like having just a sing oftentimes a singular writer and yeah. like it's like the it's like akin to like when you start doing let's plays and all of the things that you mispronounce become very apparent very yeah. quickly because everybody calls you out on it saying wind meal yeah. or window seal or something and you're like oh fuck oh fuck I'm sorry yeah and you, and you were and you were not level you didn't have this level of scrutiny before uh, definitely and that kind of stuff happens with the writing and also people just have habits that have stand strange out quirks that, that don't come necessarily through, always yeah. make sense like the drinking game course, you can play with Effie playing to be fair. Just, just all the times that Effie says, to be fair, as an opening to any sentence. And to be fair almost never actually has anything to do with the sentence he's saying and basically just means, I'm going to start talking now. Like it's yeah, this like, is my interjection. Yeah, this is the beginning of my sentence is, to be fair, like a call sign. <laughs> yeah. Like, and uh, I do that with I mean a lot. I mean, like I'll reiterate what yeah. I'm saying by saying I mean, and then yeah. people like follow it up. But I guess my point with all this, it wasn't a criticism so much as it just like, it's an interesting thing that is like just very consistent across furry visual novels that gives them a very specific flavor and it just it I think it in some ways like actually does contribute to the vibe a little bit. It's just it's a little strange. <laughs> yeah. I, I think about uh I don't remember if it was John or Hank Green or both, but like one of them was said that like their editor does as much writing as they do. Yeah. It's like that the pro the process of writing a book that gets published is so collaborative and there's so much stuff involved that the you know, it's not the idea of just like this one person just Terp, just cranks out a whole manuscript in a few years and then that just becomes a book sl weirdly slowly it's like there's a whole editorial process that be is between there and it skips a lot of these issues happening but yeah we all fix it on very specific things though I flinch it really feels as though my flesh has been flayed raw they still his booming voice calms me as he rises defiantly to his feet. The husky moves over to one of the makeshift cabinets, wrenching open the drawers and plunging upon side. That is what comes to mind for me, is when I think of the word booming, it doesn't sound like a soothing word. It sounds yeah. like akin to like deafening, or other like abrasive words, as opposed to like soothing, or smooth, or uh, suave, or I don't know. Is it the low rumble of his voice? <laughs> I wordlessly watch his puffy tail swinging calmly from left to right. What happened to me? You are injured. Oh, good. That clears things right up. 
How? I jolt when he slams the drawer shut with a clang. He turns back to me, holding a tin box and brown glass bottle. Toy too big. He strides over to the items and kneels back down beside me, flicking the box open. Inside is a small suture needle and some thread. Even without memory, I know they're for, for surgical stitches. Yeah, because we've already talked. We know what stitches are at the very least. <laughs> I'm surprised this had the stitches didn't come up already, though. Stitch me up, please. I am ready to move surgery, beyond the Daddy. bleeding subplot. I don't exactly trust him. And I know it's going to hurt, but letting him stitch up my injury is better than bleeding to death. I try to straighten my back out and give him room. Thanks. Quiet. Aren't huskies supposed to be friendly? The husky pops the cork off the glass bottle and pours its contents into a cloth. The pungent stench of alcohol makes me gag. Husky is interesting, because for a bit there I was wondering if he was a wolf or a husky, and husky implies humans, once again. It's some sort of post-human society where dog breeds existed, and then dog men happen somehow? He presses the alcohol-soaked rag against my raw, open flesh wound. White, hot, blinding agony tears through my side and sprays all over my abs. Ah, fuck. Quiet. Tears are literally forming in my eyes. I'm gripping the side of my bed and fighting off convulsions from the pain. I wish he'd done the shit while I'd been unconscious. I'm, that's what, I was confused why he didn't pierce, why, why he didn't previously stitch us up. He just left us there. It is, it is a very odd choice to, like, only do this now. <laughs> he starts piercing my skin with a needle. The pain eventually ebbs to the point where I can think straight again. I'm not into the men. man. Where are we? Home. Uh, okay. His eyes stay locked into, onto my wound while he works. I don't remember anything. Tell me what you are. Sorry? Tell me what you are. So humans are not around, is what I'm guessing. I'm human? Well, I'm a gay bottom. I'm <laughs> roughly 29 <laughs> just, years old. He just and I answers like long bottom. Walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you are. Uh, uh, bottom. Bottom, Bo daddy, sir. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> His snout flicks right up at me. He looks baffled. Human. Yeah. He's giving me a really suspicious look, which is the same as his angry look. His ears are splayed backwards, and his his tail is gone still. What? With a snort, his muzzle tips back to downwards, and he resumes the stitching. Be still. So, what are you? He loudly ignores me with a flick of his ears. <laughs> I've just never seen anyone like you before. I mean, I... I've seen dogs, but... He grunts sharply. Sorry, not dogs, I mean, uh, you know... Hounds? Is that a better word? <laughs> 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 Trying not to be racist in the setting that I've never existed in. He continues to ignore me. Also, I don't, I don't know how you can clar how well you can clarify those words when you're not speaking that same language anyway. Yeah. Uh, when, would I, when would I ever shut up? Let's say more things. <laughs> I love that that's the choice. <laughs> shut up or just keep talking. Just keep saying things. They, um, those hounds weren't like you, though. They were small and uh, walked on four legs. You know, dogs, sorry. Hounds, they're, they're very cute. I mean, not cute. They're not as in, uh, you know, like, cute, cute, cute. I'm not saying you're cute. You're not. Saving more things. They're, that's just, that's not, I just mean you're not, you're not like other dogs. I'm sorry, hounds. <laughs> <laughs> you're not like other girls. I'm not like other girls. I mean, you seem almost human. Sorry, I didn't mean that you are human, not on the outside. I just mean that, like, on the inside, you, you, you know, you could be human like me. Like, you could have a human inside you if you wanted to. I mean, I mean, fuck, sorry. What I'm saying is that you could be inside me. Oh, that's the same joke that the game made. <laughs> Why am I like this? 
Oh, for a, for a second I could swear I could hear him, see him smirk. It's palpably subtle. Hmm. He gets back to the job at hand, ignoring me. I mean, he's technically already been inside of you if he's cleaned out your wound. Yeah. Outstanding, Alex. I should really learn to shut my mouth. Never. What I mean is, I I'm human, so, uh, what are you? Hound. Hound? Hound. Is Hound your name? No. Oh. I go quiet and let him work on my stitches, not wishing to hum humiliate myself any further. Nothing's more humiliating than a slight language barrier. <laughs> oh man, it would take seconds to clear this up. Better not. However, after a few more moments of silence... Loken. Huh? It is my name. Oh. Hmm. He actually responded. Maybe he's not so bad. Nice to meet you, Logan. I'm Alex. Quiet. Never mind, he's an asshole. Logan tugs the suture thread taut and snaps the string off. He wordlessly gathers the, his things up and strides off to put them away. I look down and inspect his handiwork. I'm no doctor, but the stitches look quite clean. Thanks. Hmm. He won't talk to me. And the way he keeps scowling at me is really scathing. What did I do to piss him off so badly? Hey, Loken? Sorry, but have you got anything warm I could wear? You are extinct. Like, impendingly, or...? <laughs> <laughs> I scrunch my face up at his abrupt statement. He sta his, he's staring reproachfully at me. What? Humans are extinct. Tell me what you are. He can't be serious. I told you, I'm human. No, do not lie to me again. It's not a lie. Humans are extinct. But, uh, since when? Many centuries. So you've never seen one? No, tell me what you are. Man, he's really stubborn. I'm human, I swear on my life, which is... Funny, because I'm about to die. <laughs> That's a poor phrasing, honestly, in that context. Loken folds his arms, his baleful scowl growing deeper. It's the truth. He's, he growls at me again. I told you, my memory is gone. I woke up here, and, and that's it. I don't know where I am, or who I am, or how I got hurt, or what year it is, or why it's so fucking cold. His nose twitches. Please, I'm telling you the truth. That's a face. <laughs> Logan's eyes roll. I hear him irritably grumble under his breath. Fine. He leans down to the geriatric portable heater by the fire pit and switches on it on. It words to life, and he lazily points in my direction. A glorious rush of warm air soaks my skin. I shiver with relief, letting it bathe me, bathe my cold kissed flesh. I forget that Loken is still leering at me with his fastidious scowling. Another adjective that threw me. I just shut yeah, my eyes I and enjoy the warm air. I don't know if that is the correct usage. I, he scowled fastidious. fastidiously. <laughs> It literally means he's he scowls continually for a long time, which makes the still in or, or like stubbornly, basically. Uh, so the fact that it said still um, is kind of odd because fastidious implies that it, it takes place over a period of time. Like it's like a very concerned and like detail oriented scowl. <laughs> so hmm. it's just a kind a of thorough odd. scowl. Yeah, he gave he gave you a thorough, very anal retentive scowl. <laughs> ah, thanks. You require fresh bandages. I hear him move away and rustle around the lodge as I keep my eyes closed. The respite from the cold makes me realize how tired I am. This wound has made me far weaker than I thought. It is summer. What? Loken has grabbed a bundle of fresh linen bandages and brought them over to me, kneeling back down to my level. 
It is summer, yet you are cold. Uh, yeah? His eyes narrow. Explain. I just am? <laughs> okay. One, I don't get why he doesn't get it, but one, but two, terrible explanation. Like, you know he's covered in fur. You know the difference here. <laughs> I am not cold. You have fur. You do not? What? <laughs> what do you think, bud? It's visible. How dumb are these dogs? Humans don't have fur. You are not a human. Yes, I am. And also clearly have no fur with my... You can, eyes can see, regardless of that. No. I bite my tongue to stop myself from snapping at his stubborn ass. Well, I still don't have fur, so yes, I'm cold. Logan's face softens. He stares intensely at my bare chest and shoulders, seemingly baffled by my human physique. The crude well, leggings yeah, I'd be I'm wearing too are... if you had a bare chest but were a human. Yeah. The <laughs> the crude leggings. Yeah, it took a second for that chest. joke to hit, didn't it? Yeah, there you go. It keeps on the same page as me now. I, I've, I've done the bear <laughs> pun too many times that I'm numb to it. <laughs> he mauled me with his bare hands. <laughs> the crude leggings I'm wearing are keeping me decent, despite only being leggings, but I'm still very exposed to his graceless stare. That that one made sense. That one made sense. Let yeah. him stare, as opposed to stopping him. It's not like I wasn't stealing glances at him earlier. I must be just as strange to him as he is to me. He does more than just stare. I almost yelp when I abruptly feel his huge paw pads dabbing my chest curiously. Uh, hi. He ignores me and applies a small amount of pressure to his touch. I'm almost knocked off balance by his strength. His paw pads are pleasantly malleable. It actually feels quite nice. Loken's ears bounce back as he needs my pectorals. He needs them. It almost It's almost amusing how he has absolutely no regard for my personal space. Like a dog. You are he's making He's making biscuits on your chest, dude. He's making That's like biscuits. the best part of owning a pet. He's making biscuits. That's what it's called. Yeah. When it, like when a cat needs, they're making biscuits. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like just a thing. so goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's much stranger when it's an eight foot tall man. Uh, I guess. You are cold. <laughs> is this Parapug? Is this Parapug? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I do. I, I know. It's just like, I I immediately liked Parapug in Grimbeard's, Vids, Grimbeard's videos, but I got so fucking invested when he was just like, I'm cold. You're, you're cold? How are you cold? You're a machine... I am cold. I was like, so I'm so immediately invested in the character. I'm like, no, I'm worried about the dog now. <laughs> Told you so. Mm. He inches his muzzle slightly closer to my chest and his nostrils flare. Did you just smell me? Yes. Uh, he's just as bad as Bite. Then again, he is a dog, I suppose. Sorry, hound. Whatever. You invented the idea that that was offensive. Don't fucking fix it on that. <laughs> <laughs> you do not smell of rat. Oh... Well, okay. just because he's not a rat, you dingus. There's rat anthros here, poggers. I summoned them by mentioning Grimbeard. This joke appeals to three people. <laughs> you, me, and Grimbeard. Yes. <laughs> you are not a rodent. Did you think I was a rat? Yes. Well, I'm not. No. I'm human. No. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy his one-word answers. Uh, it's a good character trait. I enjoy this. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> it begins wrapping the fresh bandages around my abdomen. You are small. Well, you're big. No. <laughs> oh. They're usually nine feet tall. Okay. Um, yes. Compared to me, you're huge. <laughs> yeah, there's the short seven foot eleven king or whatever. No, you are small. Stubborn as a mule. I'm still restrained to his bed, so I shake the chains with my foot. You tied me up. Yes. Any chance of taking it off? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You afraid I'm gonna beat the shit out of you or something? I see the glimmer of an amused smirk on his muzzle. You would flee. Flee where? I have no idea what's out there. I'd probably freeze my balls off anyway. Speaking of, the chief will decide. Chief? Yes, she wants to see you. So there are more of you? Many. Are you all hounds or... No. Who are you guys? Do you have a name? The Dracone clan. Are there other clans? Perhaps 20 have come this season. Oh, there's a there's an amalgam. Everyone's meeting up for a thing. They don't live here? Oh, yeah, it's like a gathering or something. Yeah. Most are nomadic. Draconia are sedentary. Loken fishes, finishes applying the new bandages. He steps away, inspecting his work. Your treatment is finished. You must move carefully. Yeah, I will. Thanks. You must not reopen the wound. Yeah, I won't. Thanks. You must not attempt. I get it, Loken. I'll be careful. Do not interrupt me. I'm taken aback a little by his sudden sternness. Sudden? Sudden! <laughs> sudden! My heart clenches. Sorry. You must not attempt to run. I won't. Jeez, he can go from calm to grouchy at the drop of a coin. But always, he was always stern, though. The drop of a coin? The drop of a... Yeah, that's not a phrase. The drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah. Drop of a coin. <clears throat> There's like, you can drop a... Uh, I, hmm. You can drop like a pin, a hat, or a shoe in different contexts, but coin does not make the list, I don't think. Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> As I watch him stand to his full height and put his medical supplies away, I, I ponder his this brutish hound. He's clearly intelligent. He kn He knew how to treat my injury, and he did a good job. And yet, he also seems a bit... simple? Maybe it's just the stiff, direct way he talks. I'm desperate for answers about myself, but I don't think asking him about my condition is a good idea. Why? He, uh, he didn't even know what a human is. If I start talking about bite, who knows how he'll react. I'll just have to be careful what I say. Yeah, I would, I would potentially keep that part a secret. But he, he does seem to answer basically every question. So he's very communicative, yeah, he actually. Has, he is, <laughs> yeah, not lied basically about anything, it seems. He gives very simple, direct answers to every single question. Hey, mind if I ask you more questions? He exhales, irritated. Oh, we've added the, the anime clench. That's when you know he's really <laughs> at done here. You Is ask he many like a questions. Camp doctor? Uh, maybe. That's what it seems like. Yeah, it could be. Either he very specifically found us and took us in, or somebody brought us to him. And since the chief yeah. already knows about us, that seems likely. So he might be just specifically the one that treats people. I wonder if he has like a shaver or something to deal with fur when he normally has to stitch people. You don't like questions? Uh, uh, that is another he has, question. He has powerful ancient technology known as a Z Gillette razor. A Gillette razor, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cantanker cantankerous hound. Loken sighs and surrender. He pulls a crude ceramic jug from one of his shelves. He brings it over and stuffs it into my grasp. I hear water sloshing around within. Uh, thanks. It is water. Yeah, I got that. Okay, you don't need to mouth off, Alex. It is for drinking. You don't say. Drink. Lucan strolls back to the other side of the lodge. Ask questions. When Chief arrives, be silent. I take a swig of the water. It's ice cold. My teeth sting as it freezes my mouth. Clasping the jug of water between my two hands, I feel my feet. I pull my feet up onto the bed and sit, cross-legged, facing the grumpy husky. Okay, so... Are humans really extinct? How did that happen? Humans are extinct. I found you in black zone. That is not the question I asked, but... Additional volunteered information. We're making progress. <laughs> that doesn't answer my question. You found me where? A black zone in a Zephyr city, far east from here. That just raises more questions. 
I don't... Huh? What is a black zone? Zephyr? What are you talking about? You do not know what a black zone is. No? It's Chernobyl. <laughs> Do not know what the Zephyr are? <laughs> no. Sounds like it's wind related, right? Oaken gets yeah. up and walks over to me. Ugh. <laughs> the sheer size is no less intimidating, but I'm less freaked out by him now. He cups the underside of my chin and tilts my head to inspect me. I scowl, bemused by his brutish treatment of me. I scowl, bemused. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Hello there. <laughs> Your memory loss. Yeah. You know what caused it? No. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it has occurred before. I don't remember. You remember nothing. I barely recognize- I barely remember my own name. I don't know anything about Black Zones and Zephyr. He lets go of my chin with a grunt. The husky stalks back to the opposite side of his home, leaning against a post with his arms folded. The Zephyr lived in great cities of stone and steel. They had machines and used technology. That sounds familiar. They are now extinct. Centuries ago, they fell to ruin. It was called the Cascade. Everything ended. The Zephyr, wait, the Zephyr ways have been forgotten, but we salvage what we can from the ruins of their cities. I miss the end of the world. Damn. Although without my memories, the revelation doesn't hit me as hard as it should have. All I can think about is where I fit in into all this. The mystery of my origin grows more urgent with every word he speaks. I'm, ca I'm taken aback by how this is the third story where I wake up... I wake up tended to while bleeding and wounded by a wolf. And it's the second one where they have amnesia. Because <laughs> I we just did... Yeah. I did Liar with you, but a few weeks before that I did uh, Remember the Flowers. And that, that is a wounded human discovered by a wolf. In an alley, though, uh, who also has amnesia. All I can think about is where I fit into all this. The mystery of my origin grows more urgent with every word he speaks. So the Zephyr were all human. We do not know. Well, what caused the Cascade? We do not know. I scowl. The world literally ended and nobody remembers how? Hmm. Many believe the Black Zones are involved. What are they? Cursed lands where demons roam. Now we- that, that, that demon requires interpretation now. Yeah. But, but, by the way, you can, you can head out if you need to, because we're like really running out of time here. But I want to- no, I'll probably sorry, try to finish can... the scene context-wise. We, we can keep going. <clears throat> I lean forward, my interest immediately enraptured. Did you just say demons? Yes, creatures that appeared during the Cascade. The clans must avoid the Black Zones to survive. We live and travel between them. Some Black Zones cover only a small valley. Some are countless miles. All that remains of the Zephyr are inside the Black Zones. In one old city, I found you. And the Black Zones are full of these demons? Yes. They cannot leave the Black Zones, but are deadly. They hunt and slaughter us. They twist the mind of their prey. I think they're... machines? Yeah. I also think that the... Uh, yep. I also think that our AI is a demon. Yeah, the AI is a demon, exactly. Read what he says. <laughs> the spirit of the demon is housed in metal, glass, and wires. They evoke fear and... It's Wait, the Matrix. We're gonna, he's gonna get. He's it's gonna get tentacle porned by a uh, by a big uh, machine octopi. squid. I was right to call out the falling ones and zeros. It's all the it, metaphor for uh, being the Matrix. <laughs> Wait, wires like those? I point to the wire hanging out the back of the fan eater. Logan grumbles. The heater is not a demon. No, I mean, <laughs> you're saying the demons are machines like robots. Loken just gives me a blank stare. He said they're made of metal and wires. Machines are not living. He's not following, but I'm starting to draw a theory from his description. Bite. What if the Zephyr were wiped out by a machine rebellion? These demons could be his, his, of his could be rogue AI. 
It's possible. These Zephyr, he described, sound like a technologically advanced society, perfectly capable of progressive robotics and artificial intelligence. I don't think Loken knows what AI is, though. His culture seems very primitive. Try asking him very clearly. Mean? Loken, are these demons artificial intelligence? The Hound gives that's me not... one of his bilious <laughs> scowls. There's so many that's... different descriptions of scowls. I want to combine them all together into like a, a shirt. <laughs> the the issue here is <laughs> like he said to ask him more clearly. And instead of actually asking like a better, more clear question to the animal man who doesn't know what AI is, he just reiterates what he says and enunciates it. Yeah. <laughs> is it artificial intelligence? <laughs> I still don't know what this is. Oh, they, 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 oh, they don't speak English. Do you <laughs> understand me? <laughs> they are spirits within metal bodies. I mean, are they computer programs? Do you, um, do you have computers? He just stares at me. You don't have AI. You are talking nonsense. Yeah, he hasn't got a clue. Whoop! <laughs> Why? Looks like science has been forgotten. If you had the same knowledge of technology as these clans do. Computer does not equal science. They clearly... They, I do not think they are post-science. <laughs> he literally does medicine. Like, which is to say none at all. And you saw a crazy killer robot. You'd probably assume it was a demon, too. If we tell them about you, they might think that you're one as well. Then they might be right. Agreed. But we still need to find out how we got here. Amicus concerned face. I suddenly realize Loken is frowning. I might have gone... I must have just gone abruptly quiet while I was talking to Bite in my head. Uh, sorry. It's a lot to take in. How did you find me? You were inside a glass pod, within a ruined Zephyr structure. You were unconscious. Sounds like a hibernation pod. What did I look like? Large, steel, with glass, ovoid in shape, of Zephyr design. I attempted to open it and pull you out. I could not. A demon was present. I had to be fast. I smashed the glass and pulled you free. The glass was sharp. He points at my injury. I bandaged the wound swiftly to stop the bleeding. I carried you back here. The journey was long. I placed you in my home when I arrived. You were weak. Because if he's been out for 13 hours, then a lot of that might have been the travel. So that would explain why he wasn't uh, stitched yet. Yeah. It also might be why he was annoyed that he was awake so early. I went to my chief and told her of the furless creature I'd found. She wishes to see you herself. When I returned to my home, you had woken up and reopened your wound. You required further treatment. It doesn't tell me much, but it's something. Well, th thank you for getting me out of there. I considered leaving you. I do not trust you. Oh. Charming. Here I thought we were warming up to each other. Loken's brow perks up thoughtfully. But I have never found anything like you. Perhaps you are important. My chief will decide. All that really matters is that I'm not dead, I suppose. I tilt my head and look behind at the boxes of modern junk he's keeping in his home. You like collecting stuff from Zephyr Ruins? I am a black runner. A what? Alex. Context. <laughs> if I get it, then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's places called black sites where they salvage from. Wow, I think the person that does that might be called a black runner. A black runner. We hunt in the black zones for salvage, remnants of Zephyr society, supplies, materials, or technology. We bring it back to our chieftains to be repaired and used, or traded to other clans. 
We also guide the nomadic tribes around the Black Zone borders safely. You scavenge in the Black Zones? What about all the demons? That's why, that's why he's good at stitching. <laughs> Loken nods, his gaze turned somber. It is hazardous. A Black Runner acolyte must be trained in body and mind. It is not always enough. We are becoming infrequent. Loken gestures at his boxes of junk quite proudly. I am one of the most senior black runners in the mountains. That's not good. That's not good. He's only in his 30s. <laughs> That's very yeah. not good for black runners. That's a bad sign. Zephyr's salvage is invaluable. All clans desire it. They believe it is spiritually sacred. Working Zephyr technology is priceless. They have been, there have been violent wars between clans over functioning remnants. Like this heater. <laughs> like this yeah. shitty space heater. <laughs> yep. Several died. Imagine that. Treating all these moth-eaten everyday objects with some kind of religious reverence. Moth-eaten is a weird way to... feels like a weird description of Extremely machines. Extremely strange way to describe a machine, yeah. Yeah, moth-eaten kind of describes I, like books. Yeah, or it, clothes. Yeah. Fabric. Like it does mean Organic old. Organic material. Or abandoned, kind of, but not machines. <laughs> yeah, it is very odd. What I... About, what about your heater? Did you find it in a black zone? I did. It was in good condition. I repaired it. And the light bulbs, too? I'm surprised you have electricity. <laughs> 10,000 year old LEDs. Yeah. The Draconic Lens controls the Great Barrier Dam in the north. It gives us power. The only lights left are from gamer computers. <laughs> it's just all strobing through the rainbow over and over again. They can't change the setting. Looks like the tribes aren't quite as primitive as we thought. Aren't, aren't the lights and heater really valuable? Why did you keep them? They are mine! As if I've just threatened to steal them, he bares his teeth menacingly at me. Wow, he's really possessive of his stuff. Huh, <sighs> just like a real hound. Are dogs famously possessive? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, territorial. I just thought you gave everything to your clan. I claimed these. They are mine. I frown at him. It is the Black Runner's right. We can invoke it whenever we wish, as payment for the task we undertake. Our right grants us ownership of any piece of salvage we find, for life. Once invoked, that item is ours. Even the chieftains cannot take it from us. The right is absolute. It's called dibs. You pee on it. <laughs> Why not just claim everything you find? Then I would not be a good black runner. He looks back at his pile of salvage. Most clans accept any salvage from the black zone, but my chieftain does not accept junk. She is particular. What do people do with the stuff you guys bring back? If it is functional, it is used. Otherwise, it is traded. We do not know what most of it is. The Zephyr ways have been lost. The old knowledge has been forgotten. That's crazy. You risk your life for the stuff you don't even know what it is? Loken grumbles thoughtfully. I follow his eyeline to the revered pile of complete junk. I actually recognize some of it. The pieces aren't that aren't total scrap anyway. Well, looks like you've got an old electric toothbrush there, I think. Or it was? It's pretty messed up. His head swivels around to me, brows furrowed. Explain. The plastic thing. In the crate there, it's a toothbrush. Loken's face tightens, as though he's just sniffed an intruder. His eyes dart from the, the crate of junk and then back to me. Did I just offend him? Oh, sorry. This stuff probably means a lot to... Before I can finish apologizing, takes the decrepit toothbrush from the box and thrusts it determinately in front of my face. It stinks. It's covered in centuries of rust and grime. There's no way it still works. I try to hide my disgust in case I accidentally offend him again. Identify it. What the hell's gotten into him? Um, like I said, it's an electric toothbrush. Looks really old. That bit there oscillates when it's switched on. He blinks at me. I blink back. Logan drops the toothbrush back into the crate and frantically picks up the next random piece his paws find first, shoving it in front of me with the same urgency. Identify it. 
Am I Deckard Cain? That's, uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly. It's, it's a circuit board? Well, half of one, it's broken. You have no memory yet you know these things? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Zephyr were my people. I mean, they sound like... Wait. Logan silences me with a growl, his ears flicking upward. Outside, I hear two pairs of heavy footsteps getting closer. The chieftain has arrived to say, see you. Say nothing. Loken moves towards the door, but I think that's our cliffhanger for the day. That's the, uh, alright, that, that, we have set up now. We know what the setting is, at least, on some level. And that is intriguing. I'm, I'm curious where this all goes. Yeah. That is, it was, that is interesting. I have, um, I have questions. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, it's always a good setup when you're just like, okay, what the fuck's happening here? <laughs> Yeah, that is really odd. Um, I, I like the idea of it being, you know, the post-apocalypse with human technology. It's interesting that we played two games back-to-back -back that are like this. Human society <laughs> has fallen, and you were the one human that can identify the human technology. In the last case, it exactly. was a bomb. Yeah. For context, last um, week we just played uh, Shelter. But that character didn't have amnesia and was not bleeding. So that broke up the difference between Liar and Remember the Flowers. But there definitely is, like, there are comparisons to be made amongst the yeah. uh, human in a furry world ones we've played so far. The old, the old furry yeah. ones have more divergent openings. Definitely. I think it's it's interesting, too. Like, there's been there's a lot of these furry games that go for the same exact... Not I'm realizing, I I'm realizing that the, the all furry ones are are strangely much more likely to take place in college, <laughs> in, a, in yes. a furry college <laughs> where everyone fucks. <laughs> well, I, w I was about to say, it's like there are like two genres of furry novel. It's either... Um, human isekai post-apocalypse. <laughs> exactly. A human isekai in college. a historic, a, a vaguely historic human setting, except you replace all of the warring tribes with furries. Or it just takes place in New York, but everyone's a squirrel. <laughs> it's I want to meet. Yeah, that's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no, there's no in between. I want to meet the rats. Can we defect to the rats? Uh, watch the rats be like Skaven. <laughs> shelter, uh, not shelter. Uh, Cleaved was also like that. It's one of the ones I did right, right before he started doing this with me. It's uh, the ones that Hap, that Haps worked on. And that was an isekai where a human scientist gets warped into human into furry medieval land and just and and just is suddenly stuck there between and they clearly like liked Rob the Robin Hood movie so you can either yeah. side with the sheriff of Nottingham or Robin Hood, uh, <laughs> but yeah like <laughs> the, that guy was also I think not wounded though but he was cold. So that's some, the, <laughs> we can create things in uh, we can create a neural net between these ideas to make the ultimate furry visual novel with all of it. <laughs> one of the most recurring <laughs> themes that people enjoy. We could we can make the ur novel. <laughs> we can make the, the yeah the the mega novel the uber novel. I think you know it's kind of interesting and it's like my like my personal favorite kind of furry setting is mixed with humans but i want a very down to earth setting that's extremely grounded where human society exists basically exactly as we know it except there are also furry races and then the world just has to find a way to deal with that in like an interesting way um because that would be weird yeah. and unique and like and think about all that so. And not to claim that I'm especially original either, because my first instinct for, for the idea of writing a furry visual novel story was to basically do, like, all furry Silent Hill in the woods. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, th this is not even to say, you know, that this this is a bad idea or anything. I actually, I like this no. setup a lot. And if I were to do a furry fantasy thing, like, granted, I would probably just not put humans in it. But the, the oh, idea yeah, of... <laughs> Yeah, the idea of like it's ancient Rome, but furries. It's the Vikings, but furries. Like that's compelling, and it's very easy iconography to understand. I also like that this and Shelter give the human a purpose uh, as a human in the story, instead of just being like it's you, a self insert. So you're human. Yeah. But everyone's a furry, and no one knows what you are, and it doesn't matter mostly. And you probably stuck here forever, or something. Like because like, like, some of them do just kind of like the humanness just does not is not relevant. But here it do be.
And I do want to know what happens next, but that's the nature of these. If you want to check this game out, you can find the link in the description. It's it's on itch.io, like all the free visual novels are and whatnot. See you guys next week with another one. Yeah, well, tell us on Twitter what we should play and maybe we'll listen or maybe we'll just pick from a list. You're not my boss, so you can't tell me what to do. Everyone is chosen under different circumstances every week. Sometimes it's just vibes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>